Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Smash the Light TV. Here I have Miss J Stars with me, and we're going to react to a particular video that has made it viral. I, I believe a lot of people might have seen it on TikTok by now. Um, I actually did a video based on this particular pastor who had um, the cops come to his church and pretty much arrest him for some of the things that he's been accused of. And in that video, I was just speaking about, you know, leaders in the church being accountable. Well, here we have a pastor named Ricky Scott Sr. He's one of the individuals that I spoke of in that accountability video. And he was fired as the pastor of East St. Peter Missionary Baptist Church in Abel, Mississippi. Um, now, this was days after a woman claimed to be his mistress. And she said that she was pregnant with his child during a, a Sunday service. Now, Pastor Ricky Scott has been terminated by the church um, as of Monday, January 8th. 2024. Um, the church says has no affiliation with the building for future or pastor Ricky Scott. Now, as I mentioned before, the pastor's termination came days after a TikTok video of his alleged mistress identified as Yulana Chandrea Beavers attacked the first lady, obviously the pastor's wife. And that whole situation went viral. The incident prompted the Lafayette County Sheriff's Office to intervene and escort beavers out of the church premises. Now, we're going to get into the video. Some of this might have been seen in a previous video that I posted. However, this is like the entire video. There may be some parts that are missing, but there's a lot of the video here that I did not bring to my channel when I first spoke on this particular subject here. So we're going to play the video and then in between we'll have some reactions and at the end we'll have more commentary. So we'll begin. Let's play the video. Oh my God. <laughs> I think she said kick that girl's you know what. <laughs> Because I asked to do one thing. I 
I'm asked to do one thing, ask a question. They won't let me ask a question. They won't let me ask a question they know I'm telling the truth. You can't. I asked them to let me ask one question. This church needs to. I asked You already, you know, when y'all came to that meeting, y'all said, I'll let you speak. Let the meeting. You don't remember that? Right, right, right. Hold up. No, no, no. This is what happened. Do you not remember? Hold up, no, no. See, why they won't let me talk? I, hey, y'all, all I ask is to ask one question. All I ask, they won't let me ask my one question because they know I'm telling the truth. And, and the police think I'm on private property and ask me to leave if I'm not doing nothing to nobody. That's a private property. That's a private property. The right way is, the, 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 right, the right way is, number one, number one, the right way is, who, where is your church role? Where's your church role? You gotta have an active church role. Where's your church role? Where's the secretary of the church? No, 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 you're not you. How you find one? The church secretary is supposed to have one. You have to be here, but you coming on first Sunday, so how you know who's your second, third, fourth? No, 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 we're gonna, if, as long as we do it right, I'm okay. I'm okay with it right. As long as we do it right. Because you can't just bring folk in here that ain't been in here in, since, since September of 2014. You can't do it. And that's not gonna happen. No, he did not try to play Sister Edame Jenkins and tell her she can't say nothing because she ain't been to church in like a month of Sundays. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Let's continue. Dang it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm the pastor of the church. I'm the pastor of the church and had not done nothing to nobody. The church will witness. I'm the pastor of the church and had not done nothing to nobody. No, 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 because I have not done that. I am the pastor. I'm the pastor of the church. And if I, I, I can't do that, I haven't done anything. I'm the pastor. Okay, come on, I'll talk to you. Come on, come on. I'll be back. I'm going to say I'm a pastor. He really thought that the pastor would be
All right, J Stars. I got a obviously I got a few questions for you, but the first question that I'm gonna ask you is what comes to mind, especially with you being, you know, um a Christian woman and you've been a pastor yourself, you know, you've been involved in the church a whole lot yourself. What's the first thing that comes to mind when you see something like this in, inside of a church setting? early in this video can you hear me clear brother i can i can hear you you're good early in this video i seen it before mm -hmm. but i i couldn't get all the way through it though because what i saw was so much chaos too much chaos and i'm gonna tell you what what was the worst thing the worst the worst of all the worst of all was children children in that room mm -hmm. come on somebody mm -hmm. children in that room when you got a god is not the author we all know like you said we all been to church most of us mo really people that i don't really just hold nothing much against is the young people because they really have a had a disadvantage of really knowing the Lord, hearing about them, just all of that. So just I don't to really just to interject really quick, I'm gonna let you finish. The the kids was the first thing that came to my mind too. I, I, I have to agree with you there. That I feel bad for the kids, but go ahead, continue. Okay. The, but my very first, my very, very first thought about this whole situation was unbelievable just unbelievable and i i tried to watch it and when i saw all that chaos because what what does the word say that god is not the author of confusion right right what was in that room nothing but confusion and chaos mm -hmm nothing but so i know god was nowhere in that room at all and number one the children the children watching this what you think that tell them how to handle problems what do we think that tell them they saw this they witnessed it they was in there I heard children crying. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. That was, yep. Lord, what, okay. And you know why they were crying? Because the um the girl was beaten on the first lady. Oh, That's, oh, yep. a fight. Yes. Yeah. So, In the beginning of that video, they was dragging that girl out the church. That was right after she had put her hands on the first lady. Go ahead. Unbelievable unbelief a fight now i did hear somebody say lord they fighting in the church remember My in God. the beginning the girl was saying beat that bees you know what so you know what this tell me now and i gotta be honest about it because i'm never gonna hold back i don't care who it is or what it is or who it's supposed to be 
because we all know and we all have been uh it's been revealed it's been exposed and then everything about all these false prophets and really that has populated and dominated the world for at least a good 50 years so with that being the case you got sexual immorality you got fighting you got backbiting gossiping you got backstabbing you got adultery you got fornication you got i could go on and on i think that's enough so let me ask you a question because um one of the points that i made in one of my previous videos there's a guy i think his name is Corey minor i hope i'm not jacking his name up but he has a um a good channel actually um called the smart christians channel and um he was making the point that in our modern day churches have a holiness problem but j stars as long as i i grew up in the church you know i was born in 78 i grew up in the church and i saw a lot observed a lot like it's from my perspective a lot of what i know that's been going on in churches it it, it always seems to have been a holiness problem and that's not like a slight on the religion it's more so the people so you know i i had a little pushback against the guy um cory minor who runs this uh the show smart christians channel um i i pretty much said that i don't think it's just a modern day problem i think churches always had a hole in this problem when it came to leadership and and things like that um what do you think because you i know you've been involved in churches like uh i know this is extreme right here but you know and from my perspective there's always been an issue in in churches with a lot of the things you mentioned you know fornication adultery all sorts of stuff that's been going on in churches far as holiness that that is a very great observation because you, i believe and i agree with what you're saying about how it's always been a problem as far as holiness goes because see when it comes to you got all these different different religions right so everybody got different doctrines everybody do different things like pentecostal for one okay they're more, more what you call a holiness church this per se uh quote unquote what they say right they wear long dresses they don't they pull their hair back no jewelry and all this right just to give you a picture of, of what man see that's religion see we never got to the real attribute of holiness because we attached it to the outerwear you see mm -hmm. do you see that i hear you do i'm you listening to you. yeah and so what i would like to inject on that part right there is that when even when i was in high school and uh those of us that was part of the church not everybody but you know even in school it's gonna be some church people kids too and i was one of them but i was more from the baptist uh background but we did have some pentecostal but let me tell you who was the worst it was the pentecostal that's supposed to be the holiness them long dresses that they had on they was up more than the short ones come on somebody it ain't got nothing to do with how long your dress is or if you don't have on no makeup or none of that because the bible say that man looks at the outward appearance anyway that's that's that is just what it is tell me i'm wrong 
man oh, you, no, initially, you, initially mm -hmm. they look at the outward when you first meet a person just think about it when you first meet a person what you gonna do you gonna size them up right that's Mm -hmm. You're going to size them up. You're going to size them up. But until you begin to walk in the spirit, be led by the spirit, and really have a true relationship with God where you want to please him, none of us are perfect. And we all have had to grow. We all had to have growing pains. We had to have lessons. We made bad choices. They had consequences, you know, so we, you know, we all been there and done that. But when it becomes a lifestyle, though, you see, that's where the problem comes in. Mm -hmm. Holiness has never, ever, you right, it's always been a problem because it's always been attached to the outer wear. And I know I'm right about it. I know I'm right about it. I know I'm right about it. But what does the Bible say? God looks at the heart. You see? So it don't matter what you got on. You can find a person that can look like a to you a poor woman. You know, she just got on a good dress, skirt, nothing much, nothing comely. You don't see much about her. Just looking at her from the natural eye, you don't see much. But then you can see this another woman standing right beside her and look like a million, million dollars, right? Okay. It does not matter about what either one of them got on. It's going to matter what's in them. Do you hear me? See, that's right. why we mess up all the time. We right. mess up all the time. We've been messing up for so long because why? We don't never open up the, the package. We never unwrap that gift. We never un we, we don't know what's inside of it until it's too late. Okay. Getting back to this, this video, to me, the first thing my from my very first I, I I got tickled at one point because I say, is this real? Right. But then I heard the children crying. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I, then that's when I knew it was real. That Do you know them children are going to forget that for a minute? Hold on for a second. A pause on that on the children real quick. Let me see something. <laughs> You heard her when she said beat that bees? Yes. You heard yes. that? Hold, hold on, Joe. Yes. Hold, hold, hold on, Jay. Hold, hold on, Jay. Listen, listen real quick. That's what stunned me. I mean. No, no reverence, no, no reverence, but no, no, re no regard. But where's the no. restraint? No, there's no, no restraint to not use that language in church. I, so hold on, Jay. Let me let me ask you a question. We already see that the uh pastor got the girl pregnant. That was what is alleged. She put her hands on the first leg. What is going on in a church like that? That is like where it's just that. It's like a sense of lawlessness. It is. <laughs> it's a sense of chaos and, and disorder. That's what it is. Have and you ever seen a church get to this point? I, I've been waiting for you to ask. I've been waiting on you to ask that question. Cause I know a story and I'm gonna make it real short. This, uh, this, this is not new. I know I'm it's not. About what uh, issue I know of this been at least 
18 years ago. Show you how long this kind of crazy. But now, see, it's coming out. See, it ha it wasn't coming out like this. And but that's why I disagree out. with the guy about it not about it always being a holiness problem. Go ahead. I don't want to cut you off no more. Go ahead, tell the story. Uh I know of a similar situation just like this. You're gonna hear something in a minute. Okay. It's it's some what's wrong with this church is the head. Everything that's wrong, really, really, this is not what I would call God's church. I wouldn't. A church that's where God resides. Come on, somebody. Because see, if God resides there, it's going to be, it's, it'll take more than that to get all that out of order like that. That means there's no order in there at all. Do you, do you see that, brother? It's none. It, the, even the deacons ain't no order with them either. If there isn't, okay, wait a minute. Okay, it was a lot of men in there. Mm -hmm. The men, those men, okay, those men should have been able to to calm all that down. Come together as brothers, because we in the house of God. And it has gotten way out of order. And we know women, we can be emotional. We can, especially with something as, you know, detriment as that. And, you know, but the story that I know of is similar. This man, he moved to another state and uh, he wanted a church so bad. So you have some men that they are not really going for God. See, they really not called to God. They, they're not going to be there for the people. It's a job. You see, it's a literal job. Okay. They might be a preacher, but what they doing is a job. So this particular man, that's what it was. It was never about God's people, a purpose, God sending him there, you know, something going on in the city that God want him to be a part of helping straighten out. It was never nothing about that, right? It was about there was a church that was vacant and needed a pastor in this particular state, okay? So that what took him there. So he got there. But however, he had a, a fiance at home, okay? We promised marriage and all this to here. So, but he leaves go to the church sure enough he get the church become the pastor and for a whole year he's there by himself right mm -hmm. okay but while he there he formed a relationship with somebody in the church come on and then guess who it was the past the like the okay you know how the board, they come together and they vote for a pastor to come in, right? Mm -hmm. So one of the board members, he ended up messing with one of their daughters. Oh. And then okay. she, she thinking, he, because he got her thinking it, that they going to be together, you see? She was a big part of helping him get the church because the board members and all was, you know, connected to her. He knew in town, right? Mm -hmm. So she really helped him and show you how low down people can be just all around. This is supposed to have been a pastor. He got this lady's help. And once he got in and got what he wanted, what is that church, right? Next thing you know, here he come bringing a wife up in now. Mm -hmm. Lord have mercy. Did you hear me? I'm talking about out of the blue sky. How in the world 
you've been at this church for a whole year. You've been involved with a young lady in this church. She thinking you're going to be together because she helped you get the church. You so, you know, it's just lies all over the place. And then your fiance back at home, you got her thinking that you faithful. And she really believe in you faithful. I told her, baby, if you believe that, I'm going to let you. Because I could tell you he's not. Okay. And he wasn't. And I could take it deeper than that, but I won't. Mm -hmm. Long story short. That man, like I said. After he got what he wanted. He don't have to try to do nothing with that girl no more, right? He got the church now, and I'm the pastor, and I got to be voted out, just like this man was saying. He was so headstrong that once he got the position that he felt like that no matter what he did, that nobody could put him out. But that's not true, though. You see, it's not true. You not acting like a shepherd or a sheep over the sheep, God sheep. You're not acting like that. So uh, what happened was it didn't get like this, but it did. It was exposed because how dare you come up in here with a wife? Lord God. And I we, saw we, a lot of situations like that. Jay, I'm telling you, like, that's that was the only reason why I pushed back against the guy when he said, you know, it's like a modern day problem. I I will agree that, you know, probably our modern day may be worse in a lot of ways. But as far as a holiness problem, man, I, I know so many pastors that have been in this predicament. Um, not maybe not necessarily a fight. I know of fights that have taken place. Inside of churches, this isn't an isolated incident, but I know of a lot of pastors that have gotten, you know, caught getting certain people in their congregation pregnant and things like that. Like that's that's nothing new. Um, in that the the situation I'm talking about, mm -hmm. let me tell you what happened with them. It got volatile, yes, but now he's the pastor, right? Mm -hmm. And he been there a year. So the contract was for two years. So by the contract, you see how those contracts go? By the contract, they couldn't make him leave just because of that contract. Okay. So they had to wait that contract out because he had indeed deceived that whole body okay and then I how dare you even think that you could do something like this it, it was very disrespectful to everybody in the church the young lady that he uh used to get the church and then once he got it he just discarded her to the side like she wasn't nobody but she a member of the church before before him so let me have so let me ask you something this is good so with all that being said he they had to wait the contract out like what what would make a congregation stay with him well now what i believe now is with uh, with judgment being in the house of god mm -hmm. and now with the false prophets being exposed, the real people of God are standing up now and they're saying enough is enough. Not this right here, not this. This this don't have nothing to do with. This is pure chaos. But the real people like myself and you, and I met some more too, we are we are going to say something. You know why? Because this has affected us. This been, I can say it's, it's safely and confidently, I can say it's been 50 years 
where we have been led astray. Come on, at least 50. This is why, this is why I, I love the fact that you address the children with the first point that you, you stated. Your first point was addressing the children. And I'm glad because what do you think is going on? This is traumatic for these kids. Like, think about it. A lot of these kids are being brought to church, right? And being given certain instructions by whomever they're coming to church with, their parents, guardians, whoever it is, right? So they're obviously in church, not because they want to be, but because they're being instructed to be. And there's a lot of good lessons to learn in church. But when when you're being guided by Christian values and then you you see you see something to this is they're not outside. A lot of these kids is used to seeing this outside of the church doors. When you see this inside, I mean how forget being forget feeling safe. Obviously, you can't even feel safe if you see that going on. But how willing are you as a kid to want to listen to anybody that encourages you to go to church and you know and want to and want to kind of remain with the religion? The way I would what what I really believe in my heart is that when people witness like children, because we we're talking about them now. When children, any child though, you know, their environment is very important. It shapes them, okay? So if they are part of a church, just say a, they went to this church like this right here, just say five years. And if there's no this much chaos, it ain't been, it, has, it hasn't been no order. So there's no way this here could happen if it had been any kind of order at all. I agree. At all. I don't know these people. I don't know this man, but I feel confident enough to say that God is not in that building at all. Okay? The Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit would have convicted somebody the Holy Spirit would have. Come on, come on. If anybody, come on. The Bible talks about, it talked about, when I just got through talking about uh, the prophets. Now we ain't not getting on fighting about no prophet because we got enough word that we haven't been even doing. So why would we even jump on something like that? You know, but here you got prophets. You had Jeremiah, the prophet, prophesying what was coming. Okay. He prophesied way back that how a time was going to come when daughters was going to rise up against mothers and fathers were going to rise up against sons, daughter-in-laws against mother-in-laws, fathers sons against father-in-laws. We here. We are here. Do you not think some of all of that was in the, in that building right there? It said a man worse, the, a man's worst enemies is members of his own household. That's what it said. Yeah, that place was in complete disarray. I mean, Michael, it didn't even Michael talked about it. Michael talked about it. The same thing, how in the end, the end times, how daughters gonna rise up against, mm -hmm. but then you but then you gotta go back and get the get the scripture. Remember how he said, I brought a sword. He said, I ain't come to come to bring peace. I brought a sword. Come on. So what that mean? That mean that you're going to have some people that's not serving God. Come on. In light and dark, they cannot dwell together. They cannot. And then what it say? How can two walk together except they be in what? Agreement. You got to be in agreement. There's no agreement in that church. 
ain't no ain't no leader there is no he he calling he saying i'm the pastor i'm the pastor y'all got to vote me out and all all this and that you know but now nah, look at your behavior though you, you haven't been acting like no pastor no pastor would not have gotten one of his pew members uh in that condition and then turn around and for what what reason did the white need to be beat up? You know, I I didn't get a um a full understanding of that particular part of the story because I was wondering what you're already allegedly pregnant by her husband. husband. What will prompt what will prompt you to put your hands on? I mean, this this is so much that goes into the story that that can be dissected. It's just crazy. Like I've seen a lot of stuff in churches. I, I've never seen it to this degree here. I, I know of incidents that didn't make it to the video, you know? Um, but I, it, I mean, this is, uh, this, this is wild. Like I'm trying to figure out the answer to the question you just asked. What would make that girl put her hands on her? There, there's, you you know what I think it That's is. That's unbelievable to me. You know what I think it would be, and it's just my honest opinion. What I think it would make that would happen is that that man has not been honest yeah. with young lady. He I feel like he been telling her that he want the wife gone. Okay but it ain't happened fast enough, you see? And then now she in this condition and you s still getting up here preaching every Sunday and not doing nothing. That is, that is, that, oh, that's, that's so much uh, estrogen in that room. That was pure, that was a lot of women. Did you hear that? Them yeah. sisters. Mm -hmm. Those cousins, mm -hmm. those are friends, those are, and they all know what's going on. See, we don't know because we, we see all we can get is this. We don't know the backdrop, but everybody in there do. You see, everybody was fighting. I mean, every single body. Did you see anybody that wasn't fighting? I didn't. What see children is my one of my assignments, women and children. And if you if you want to get me riled up, if you want to get me going, you want to get a rise out of me. Let it be something dealing with women or children. And it injustice that cannot speak for themselves. Okay, that's when you get one out of me, and that's why I heard the children first. They are very upset. They crying. They don't know what why this is happening. Why auntie fighting? Why cousin? Why look? That was horrible for those children to watch. Me too. So let me let me, let me ask you because like. The question that I have in the title is why do people put so much faith in pastors? And like when you see this, when you see what this guy has already exposed to not just his congregation, but obviously to the world when something like this go viral. The fact that he don't even want to be accountable and just step down like he's even putting up a fight to still want to be the pastor. I think he even told. One of the secretaries, she hasn't been to church in like two weeks, so she don't have a voice in the matter. Like, how, how do, how do, how do people come to a point of follow, of following a person like this? There's a lot of pastors out here that's like this. Obviously, you know, you got mega pastors of mega churches like TD Jakes, who's getting exposed. I mean, these are not the only pastors that behave like this um 
you know what this sound like to me and that, from my experience because I haven't been out there a long time and I haven't been around a whole lot of churches, big ones, megas, all sizes. What this sounds like to me is a family church. It sounds like a family. Sounds like a family. You know how church with everybody in a family? Mm-hmm. I grew up in one where That's everybody is like family. Yeah, and everybody is family. And then when you get to the literal sense, yes, yes. I was just having a conversation with my cousin, letting her know that it's a lot that she wasn't aware of that I was aware of about the people in my church. Like, you know, when I was young, I I, I saw a lot. I understood a lot. There was a lot that I, I wasn't aware of. But as I got older, I became aware of a lot of different things. So like, um, you know, it's, it's easy to be caught up in, in the, in the atmosphere and the environment of the church and, and, and get caught up in, um, you know, what's, what's being told to you. There's another thing that actually kind of use your own, use your own mind to, to see what's really going on. You know, when you speak of these kids, imagine what they have to dissect. Like they're being told specific things by adults. And now they have to kind of figure out if what they're being told is actually the way they should go. When you see the the same adults who's got in the children behave like this. That's a that's a lot for that's a lot for the mind of a child, let alone an adult. When you see adults acting like this, obviously they're not of good mental health or spiritual health for that matter. Uh-uh. They how can they be? Because children are products of their environment. So, but uh, can I read something? This, of course uh, you can. How to honor God how to honor God. And it, this go for it. I don't care who church it is, you know, because see what God, and I shared this with you. He told me, and this three years ago, strong now, but when I obeyed, my whole life has turned around, you know, since then, it was all chaos. I didn't even think it could be fixed, you know, but he told me, that my word is the only thing that I watch over to perform. When you come to me, bring my word. Don't bring me no pity party. Don't bring me what he say, she say. Bring my word. That's the only thing. Okay. He say, contend with me. One scripture say, bring your argument. Come in here, state your case. But when you come, bring my word that that's the only thing. Come on. Mm -hmm. I don't even care about nothing else. Okay. Now, how, how to honor God. This scripture come to me on this, uh, this whole thing right here. Because I told you, it, one word, unbelievable. That's what, if anybody asked me, if, if I was walking down the street and somebody stopped me and say, let me look at that a little bit. And what, just to start, what do you think about that? I only thing I would say is unbelievable. And uh, another thing I could tell you that God is not in that house. I could tell you that too. Okay. So them two things I can leave you with. Okay. Now, how to honor God. This is uh because ain't neither one of you. It ain't no uh. There is no shortcut into the kingdom. There is no skipping around. You know how when you go to college, you could test out of some of them classes. You know how you can do. I did. I tested out of some of them. I didn't have to take them because I tested, but not with the word of God. Not on this spiritual journey. You're going to have to take every step. You see how to honor God. You know, I didn't know how long we want this to be, but this is very serious. And uh, 
when you was doing your uh commentary and I would just I must I felt like a kid in school, you know, you raise your hand to say something. <laughs> I kept wanting to raise my hand. <laughs> okay, I saw so much going on. Okay, but th this is what God want to say about this whole thing. This church and then the other church. When you talk about honoring him, because when you go to church, really, that's what you're supposed to be going for. I think my pastor taught a long time ago. He preached, why do you come to church? Do you even know why you come? Mm -hmm. you right. come right. your daddy, your mama, your it's the right thing to do, my husband, you know. Why? You need to know we all need to know that. Especially today, okay? But real short, the church and the condition it's been in, we are it's been revealed and exposed that we have had at least 50 years of false prophecy. So you got 50 years of people living all kinds of ways. You see, mm -hmm. so the church does not really. The church is really almost null and void right now. Do you know that? I I almost I almost agree with I I, I pretty much agree with you. I do. That's I, almost null and void. I, I do. What? I mean, look at this for crying out loud. <laughs> Who going to a church now? It just say this is just a hypothetical question. You get in the worst trouble you've ever been in your life. What church can you go to? For prayer, for prayer. I ain't talking about nothing else. I ain't talking about giving you nothing because we already know they're not going to give you nothing. We already know that. They're going to check and see, have you been paying your tithe? They're going to check and see if you're a member. They're going to check and see if you come regular. They're going to do all that. And you know what all that is? Finding every excuse why not to write that check. Okay? And but that's you know, not... You know, you make a good point because... That a lot of that matter. That's why this pastor here told the secretary she has no say in the matter because she ain't been to work church in two weeks. Okay, see, uh uh. So that means that's his house, that's not God's house, right? That's that's, house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why it's yeah. not easy for him to look God in the face and say, you know what, just, just on the account of me being a bad leader. And not honoring the word. If he'd have stuck with the word, you'd have seen order in the church. You would seen you was you would you would have seen a remorseful man. Yep. Yeah. An accountable man. Yeah. Yeah. Remorseful though. Rem mm -hmm. This is reproach. And it has gotten to the whole body and, and everybody feeling like this. That Do man you know would have. Go no ahead. contrite, no contrite spirit whatsoever. No contrition at all. You're right. At all. At all. At all. All that man was saying is I'm the pastor and nobody can't put me out. The, even the police can't even put me police. out. Because I, this is private. They this they used to say this crazy stuff. It's not true, but he heard somebody else saying it. Okay. I don't know this man. But I can tell you what I can discern. He's not no true man of God. No, okay. that's not. I, you know what? That's not even making a judgment. He don't. People forget. They they like to use this judgment word as if it's something you can't do. You telling me these people here can't make a judgment about their leader? Yes, they can. That's why he's fired. That, you know what I'm saying? Yes. You know, this whole we can't judge each other, then what's the whole point of observing each other's behavior for? Well, the scripture tell you that you can, though. But see, we don't never want to get to that part. The pastors don't never want to get to that part because they want to say what he was saying. You see? But the, not a real one. Not a real man of God. See, this is... I don't want to talk about this man. But I got to say what I see 
this spirit, I'm going to say that, this spirit that's operating in this man, okay, is not that's what operating it is. for God for sure. And if, it, if you're not operating for God, come on, tell me what church, anybody's church, where the man of God, his wife is present, and he has a mistress in there that's in a condition. And, and, and God is flowing in there. God, miracles are happening. Prayers are being answered. Come on, good things are happening. I know you can't tell me that. You know, it would have been so much better if he would have shown those kids in that church how to be a stand-up person. He allowed those cops to come and make a bigger scene. He could have just, if he had any decency, in my opinion, he could have shown them kids how to be, like you said, remorseful, accountable, and 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 how to and how to own up to when you're wrong. To put up a fight like that, knowing that you're wrong. I mean with the evidence, the evidence is here of fighting. How is a fight going on right at the moment? If I was a kid, I would be upset. I, how can how do you, how do you stop your parent from bringing you back in that church? I feel sorry for the children. I feel sorry for the children. But you know why? Because the children are gonna be like the parents, really. They're gonna be just the like only, what they see, and you hope and you pray yeah. that's not the case. You pray that's not the case. You pray yeah. that these young minds will know that something's not right. I was one of those children. I had to recognize something's not right. And even it's though a few of us, it is a few of us. And but even it ain't though a I had to. I couldn't stop myself from going to church because I had to go. I was able to see what wasn't right and not really put it on God. But one thing that I was able, I, and, I, and I love the fact that out of everything that I've observed in churches, um, I was able to, you know, spit out the bone and, and, and keep what was good, you know, for, for nourishment. You know what I'm saying? And out of all out of all of it, even I hope with these kids right here, I hope they walk away with the relationship with God and know that it's not what they see that's going to stop them to have a relationship, with, you know, with him. Um, but not but, uh, you know, not every young mind can kind of can kind of get there. And that's. That's what I pray and hope for these kids, man, because that's a lot. To, that's a lot to endure. That's a lot to digest. You know, you know, a lot of kids is probably saying this is why I don't want to be coming to this church. But yet they're forced to go. And yeah. Now they, now they have all the evidence to say yeah. why they yeah. were right. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. They see a whole uh, boy. You in the spirit. It, it's a whole lot of people said, I told y'all not to go over there. I told y'all wasn't nothing over there but a bunch of, if we knew somebody, they saying that, okay, they are saying that. They are saying that it was, they it, people had been told not to go over there because this man ain't no man, this man not, okay, I ain't going to say, I'm okay. I'm going to be safe and say, I ain't going to say he not no man of God, but I can say it, but I ain't going to say it. He showed not representing God right now. Let's say that. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. And then, you know, we ain't got to, I don't have to know him, but, but I know the word though. And bro, I want to read, I want, I do want us to uh go over this passage because see, when we was talking, when you, when we first began and you was doing your commentary and, and we was watching the video and it was two passages came to me. This scripture always going to speak to me, always. Two came, okay. One, you know, I kind of was dealing with that far. I say, no, not that one. 
I need you to go to Isaiah. Okay, Isaiah 58. That, that's what this right here is. And I'm just going to just read this little bit right here. I'm not going to do the whole thing. Okay, unless you, it's powerful enough, in, in, unless you worried about time. But you know some brother, as much going on in this world right now, if we worrying about time. Now you go ahead and read what you have. Okay, Isaiah Isaiah 58, this is what came to me in, in, in reference to all of this right here, okay? Mm -hmm. They just an example because there's many more like this. We They just happen to come up on the video and we get to see who they are. But we've been saying, we know we've been out 50 years, at least 50, right? Yeah. So we know it's a whole bunch of more of these somewhere else. Probably worse than this, but okay. I this is what God say though. Isaiah fifty eight. Lord, I can't. Boy, got me reading. Father got me reading the word now. Okay, Isaiah fifty eight, and I'm reading the everyday study edition. He said, okay, this is the subject title: How to Honor God. Ain't that what we supposed to be doing? Each and every one of us. If you're talking about anything about God, ain't that what you're supposed to be doing? Honoring him? Correct. Okay. Starting in verse one. The Lord says, shout out loud. Don't hold back. Shout out loud like a trumpet. Tell my people what they have done against their God. Tell the family of Jacob about their sins. They still come every day looking for me and want to learn my ways. They act just like a nation that does what is right, that obeys the commands of his God. They ask me to judge them fairly. They want God to be near them. See, they coming like, you know, they deserve something good. They say to honor you, we had special days. When we gave up eating, but you didn't see it. We humbled ourselves to honor you, but you didn't notice. There's these people talking to God. But the Lord says, you do what pleases yourselves on these special days. And you are unfair to your workers on these special days when you do not eat. Come on. That's called fasting. When folk talk, I done heard people, I'm on a fast, I'm on a fast. When you do not eat, but this is what you do. He say, this is what you do. You argue and fight and hit each other with your fists. You cannot do these things as you do now and believe your prayers are heard in heaven. This special kind of day is not what I want. This is not the way I want my people to be sorry for what they have done. I don't want people just to bow their heads like a plant and wear a rough cloth and lie in ashes to show their sadness, acting all pious, acting like, you know, carrying Bibles in your hand, walking around, apostle, a bishop. Oh, I'm evangelist, whatever. Do you get that? Mm hmm. This is what you do on your special day when you do not eat and you do not think this is what the Lord wants. He say, I will tell you the kind of special day I want. He say, free the people you have put in prison unfairly and undo their chains. Free those who you are unfair and stop their hard labor. Share your food with the hungry and bring poor homeless people into your own home come on when you see someone who has no clothes give him yours come on now this is the word why i ain't heard this i ain't heard nobody read this in a long time and don't refuse to help your own relatives i could stop right there i could stop right there Okay. But um, let me finish it out. 
Then your light will shine like the dawn and your wounds will quickly heal. Your God will walk before you and the glory of the Lord will protect you from behind. Then you will call out and the Lord will answer. You will cry out and he will say, here I am. Come on. So after reading that, tip, tip, what do you think that was? It's really basically a reminder of what the true and actual focus should be when you when, when you're claiming to be a Christian. And a lot of times people get that misconstrued and they're not focused on honoring God, worshiping him, dedicating their life to him. And when that's not the focus, you end up seeing exactly what we saw in this video, amongst other things, people pretty much dealing with the flesh come on you you end up seeing exactly this nobody been I praying mean, and fasting i know not around now think about it it was dealing with the flesh that got this man into the predicament that he got into and then now his church is in disarray come you on know? so god's people god's people god's you know. people in disarray now now his, but you know his what? decision to lay with that his, his, his decision to lay with that young lady not only um is going to bring a child into the world but it, it it caused it caused that that young lady to put her hands on his wife like there's just a whole lot from that from that one decision you know and that, that's gonna be repercussions behind that that lack of focus on why he's a, a pastor there will be repercussions behind that putting her hand on that lady okay uh, they don't even have to be people of god let's just deal with right okay that was her husband and you went behind her back and now it's everybody know about we the world know about it now i feel like all them people been knowing but now the world know about it and he didn't he didn't i didn't see him defending his wife i didn't even see that i didn't hear it yeah i didn't hear it it was hard, uh -uh. To, really, it was hard to really see him but you heard his voice I didn't hear I didn't hear him defending her at no, all. No, he did not. He did not. He did not. Only thing he defended was that being out of that church now. That's all he that's all he looked like he cared about. And uh how can you this? hear me? Yes. I can hear you. Can you okay, hear me? Okay, okay. I thought we might have. It did, it did go out a little bit. Okay. It did. But I feel Holy Spirit said I need to finish this up. And then we can just, you know, you can wrap up, you know, okay. what you. Uh, I'm with it. Go ahead. Okay. Finish it up. Okay. This is the rest of this scripture. Uh, starting at, uh, let me see. Then you will call out right here. If you stop making trouble for others, if you stop using cruel words and pointing your fingers at others, if you feed those who are hungry and take care of the needs of those who are troubled, then your light will shine in the darkness and you will be bright like the sunshine at noon. The Lord will always lead you. He will satisfy your needs in dry lands and give strength to your bones you will be like a garden that has much water like a spring that never runs dry he's just saying if you if you care about other people if you think about others those are just like basic things feeding people that's hungry folks outside folks need clothes that's elementary he said, you just do those things right there because what one scripture say, when, when, you, when you have done whatever to the least of these, you've done it unto me. You see, what we don't get 
is that when we hurt our brother or sister, we really hurting God and ourselves. That's what we don't know. He said, you done it unto me. Mm-hmm. You see, it's he, a lot. We not here. Mm-hmm. Okay. He said, you will be like a garden. I'm wrapping it up. You will be like a garden that has much water, like a spring that never runs dry. Your people will rebuild the old cities that are now in ruins and will rebuild their foundations. And you will be known for repairing the broken places and for rebuilding the roads and houses. Uh, Verse 13, you must obey God's laws about the Sabbath and do not what pleases yourselves on that holy day. You should call the Sabbath a joyful day and honor it as the Lord's holy day. But I don't want you to get caught up on the Sabbath on no Saturday. Not that. It's just talking about any day that's set apart for God. Okay, to honor God It's saying that don't get caught up on that right there. Because that's real deep and you don't have to. You should honor it by not doing whatever you please, nor saying whatever you please on that day. Then you will find joy in the Lord and I will carry you to the high places above the earth. I will let you eat the crops of the land of your ancestors Jacob had. The Lord has said these things, brother. That's how you honor God. That is how you honor God. Okay. Being our brother and sister's keeper. Period. This situation that we got in this church going on. Definitely was no brother and sister keeping going on in there. We can really take any scripture and show where it was not going on in this place. You see. So that's why I said one word, unbelievable. You know, go ahead. What was you going to say? uh, One thing I would top it off with. Mm -hmm. One good thing that I could glean out of all this, you know, is that after all this stuff been coming out. Okay, we know that Cat Williams video went viral. And I I believe because of the truth that was revealed. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's why I believe it. Okay. That went all over the world. Okay. The truth. And now the spirit of truth. See, the scripture talks about the spirit of truth. That's what's in operation now. Yeah. So whatever been going on in the dark, it don't matter how big your church is, how little your church is, how middle size, when all that stuff went down. And we know that judgment is in the house of God, period, now. And then the Bible say that it begins in the house of God, right? That's right. So I feel like that even though we've been hearing all this about, you know, Pastor Jakes and all this. However, it's not just about him. You see, it's not. We can't, it's for the whole house. It's for the, from the front door to the back door. It's from the white house to the outhouse. Do you hear me? And see, I feel like the reason why it got so big is because he is. You see, his reach is all over the world. That's why. But not in his defense, but in the defense of God, his house is not the only one. Mm -hmm. Every house of God, judgment is there now, okay? Because it's some some houses that's not going to make you too. We'll never see them. 
Mm-hmm. But it's a whole lot of ministry somewhere. The stuff going on just as bad or even worse. We know it. We already the prophet, the false prophet's been revealed. Who been helping? Who been teaching? Who been training? Lord, who been who been who been who been who been holy? Who has been holy? Come on now. Well, I tell you one thing. You know, um, I'll I'll say I'll say this in conclusion. When you look at this this church here, man, um, this will make for a good case study of of what to avoid because only the people that's involved with that church know what what was actually wrong and and why like you said um how could there have been a spirit of god operating in there and so um this would make for a good case study as to what what to avoid for anybody that would either <laughs> take over this church or, or start a church of their own, you know, like um, take over that church. Cause, yeah, Cause there's a whole lot that, 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 that should be avoided and, and to, uh, to circumvent situations like this from happening. Um, Brother, you said something powerful for somebody to take over that church. See, cause all that spirit still in there. You see, mm-hmm. All that spirit of adultery, all that. If it's not cleansed out of there, I'm talking about spiritually cleansed. Now I'm talking about some about some real pure pure pureness. And the next person come up in there, it may be even worse. You see, because that mm-hmm. same spirit is still there. That's the yeah. That's my. <laughs> yep, yep. That's that's a big um. That's a big job for anybody that's going to step step in and um and clean and clean that mess up. But- brother, brother, just a little analysis. Mm-hmm. Because we you know we never like whenever we do something, me and you, we both know because we have talked and we want the betterment for our people as a whole, you know, in the church we, we as a whole, but however, the analogy that I want to make in what you just said about who takes over this particular ministry, okay? You remember what happened to New Birth and ATL, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Then another pastor came along and took over that, thought he could do something with that, right? Mm-hmm. You see it. Do you see it? (laughs) Come on. Do you see it? Can you see what I'm saying? You said something powerful. Very powerful. Very powerful. I wouldn't. It would be God for me to. I went. That would have to be torn down. The foundation and everything. Right. 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 That place. This place that we're talking about now. But you know why? Because the problem was at the head, brother. It was at the head. And scriptures say like priests, like people. And then the priests bleed on the people. Come on. You see? Church is supposed to be a place of healing. <sighs> like it, this, you know, I, I find it, I find it hard to believe that moving forward. They can recruit people to come into those doors as a place of healing and, and, and spiritual healing is that, that that will be. I think that will be an uphill battle for for that particular church. But listen, I don't want to hold you up of more of your time, Jay. I didn't I didn't had you for at least almost an hour and a half. So I want to I, I, I want to let you go. We're going to have to do this again. Okay, brother, you know what I want to leave off with? That something I feel like that was good out of Let's all go. of it is that um, even though it was chaotic, he was removed from there. He wasn't allowed to stay and continue that. So I feel like if nothing else good came out of it, that part, 
was. Right. Because he needed to be removed from their period. Right. So that's what I would like to end up. And I feel like the courage came from everything that's going on now. With yeah. all the false prophets being revealed and all that people saying, we sick of this stuff. We sick of this. Get out. If you not going to do right, get out. Yeah, I feel absolutely like some people right. Some people going to do that now. So You're that's right. The good thing <laughs> that I would leave off with was saying anything good about this is that he was removed. No, you're absolutely right because I give everybody in that church courage for calling the cops and making sure he got dealt with. Yes. Because he obviously didn't see that coming. He did not see the cops coming at all. And I think that's when he really knew. It's serious. Yeah. Those people not playing around and good for them, good for any congregation that has to get to that point. Because like I said, this, in my opinion, there's always been a holiness problem in the church. There's a lot of pastors that's been operating like him for a long time now. And long getting time. away with it. And getting, getting away, away with it. With it. If we had the and technology then, their behavior would have went viral. Yes. So I commend them for that. Yep. I do commend them for removing him and you know, with God not being present, that don't have nothing to do with them. That's got everything to do with what's been going on in there, you see? Mm -hmm. And I feel like God really, really looked like to me, remember that Alabama thing? When it came down to the fight, people just had to come out and fight, you see? Mm -hmm. You know, and I feel that's a whole different thing, but with the, with this right here, the, if they wanted him out of there, it had to get like that. Hate it had to get like that. But I commend them for removing him and not letting him stay there and and just have that reproach still on God's name with him just even allowed to stay there. You're absolutely right. And so we're going to end it on that note. I appreciate you for joining me um, to have this discussion. Um, I know it took us some time to get to it, but I'm glad that you were able to join me. I want to be able to link up with you in the future to kind of react to some other things. And I think you have a good voice for people to hear. You have a lot to contribute. Um, I just want to say I hope everybody enjoys the video. Please make sure you share it. Make sure you smash that like button. You notice know to smash the like TV. So please smash that like button for me and make sure you hit the subscribe before you take the next ride. Also, make sure you subscribe to Miss J Star's channel. Just go in the, the search engine, put in J Stars. It should pop up. Make sure you subscribe to her channel. I think we should all appreciate her stopping by my channel to give me some. <laughs> Yeah, to give me some opportunities to allow people to come on and, and, and let their voice be heard. So I hope you have a good evening, Jay, and we will be in contact. Thank you so much, too, brother, for even uh, inviting me. Thank you so much. Of I course, of course. And we'll, yes, we'll be doing more, you know, moving forward. And um, you make sure you enjoy the rest of your evening. And we'll talk soon. Okay. All right now. Peace. Peace.